this is a lecture on just some basics of electricity generation and um, electrical terminology. Um, those of us that went to, to school to study engineering and especially in energy generation uh, fields got all of this a lot, long time ago and I think a lot of times we forget that not everybody understands these concepts. So this, this lecture is just a discussion of what is capacity factor. You'll hear policy wonks and engineering types and different gurus of different generations talking about capacity factor. But if you don't know what it is and how to compare it um, and how to compare facilities, you can end up very lost in this and not getting the energy you need in the end to run your house. So first let's talk about installed capacity because first you have to understand what is, what are we talking about and, and capacity factor is a ratio. So what is it a ratio of? Well, first off, let's talk about installed capacity and then we'll get to the where capacity factor comes in. It's also sometimes called the nameplate rating of the plant. So it's, it's, um, it's the maximum possible output of power. This is power because I'm talking in watts. The big W is a watt. The, the M equals a mega. So um, for most of this, I'm talking about megawatts or and mega equals a thousand. So we're talking about a thousand watts or 10 hundred watt light bulbs. Okay, so it's power. It's not it's not energy yet. It's just power. So typical maximum outputs. Um, a single wind turbine can be a variety of sizes depending on the size of the wind turbine. But the big ones that you see making their big, apparently lazy circles of their three blades out on the prairies and on the ridge lines and out in the oceans are somewhere around three megawatts. There are newer ones that are bigger, maybe five megawatts. Uh, so, but that's each tower is about three megawatts. Nuclear power plants, currently the, it varies again quite a bit, but a reasonable assumption is somewhere around a thousand megawatts for a single power plant. Coal plants, again, vary quite a bit in size, but 500 megawatts isn't unreasonable. Smaller, older ones might be 100 or 250, somewhere around in there, but, but somewhere in the hundreds of megawatts range. Natural gas plants can be quite big or quite small. Basically, all a natural gas turbine is, electrical generation, is a jet engine strapped to the ground with a generator hung on the back. Um, so they run, uh, they can run various capacities as well, but 50 megawatts is, is for a single one is a relatively modest um, natural gas electricity generation plant. Solar panels and solar arrays are much more complex, um, but a rooftop array, 200 watts is a reasonable number. You might get, if you have a really full big roof with lots of sun, you might see a kilowatt, um, which is uh, 100 watts. Um, Excuse me, it's a thousand watts. A megawatt is actually a million watts. Sorry, I was off a unit. Um, but all of this we're talking about is power, not energy, power. So the maximum power out of a wind turbine is three megawatts. The maximum power out of a nuclear plant is a thousand and on and on. So how do we get to energy? So that's a good question. That's the next question. Energy is power. Yep. I lost my pen. Energy is power for a period of time. So now it's not clicking, that's all right. So if this was a 100 watt bulb, okay, and it ran for a day, and you turned it on and left it running for 24 hours, the energy would be 100 watt days. If it was a 60 watt bulb and you ran it for two hours, that would be 120 watt hours. Okay, so you got to be careful when you're talking. When we talk energy in, in electricity and when you look at an electrical bill, it's usually in kilowatt hours, not per hour. Let's erase that. Why is this doing this to me? Okay, there we go, back to pen. So um, your electrical bill is frequently in kilowatt hours, okay? So one kilowatt hour would be 
a 100 watt bulb burning for 10 hours. So 100 watts times 10 hours equals 1,000 watt hours, right? Which is 1 kilowatt hour. So if you had all the electricity in your house was generated with 100, or all the lights in your house were 100 watt bulbs, and you turn them on for 20 minutes every day for a month, at the end of the month you would have used a kilowatt hour. So it's real simple, it's just basically power, the power level, times time. So it's the area of this box, give or take. So energy, area, of air in, you'll hear mathematicians call this the area under the curve, but we're just talking about this area of power versus time. Now we're starting to get into energy, and we can take that and calculate capacity factors. Okay, I actually kept the pen this time. So, what's capacity factor? It's really simple. It's simply a ratio of the actual, actual, or estimated, to the maximum possible energy. So, actual over maximum equals capacity factor. Since both of these are, you want to make sure they're the same, are in watt hours, okay, or watt days, when you divide one into the other, you get this, and usually we express it as a percent, so I multiply the answer by 100. So in this, in this curve over here, the maximum possible is this top line, is 100, okay, and the, but the actual, the orange space, is 90, and let's just say the time is 100 hours, okay. So what you would have here is the actual is 90 times 100. So 90 times 100 divided by the maximum possible, which would have been if this theoretical plant we have here had operated at 100 watt units, we'll say watts, 100 watts for the entire 100 hours, it would have been 100 times 100. Well, we can ignore the time here, and it just becomes 90 over 100. 90%, right? Pretty simple. But it gets more complicated because plants don't operate like that. There's different kinds of plants that operate different ways. And we'll get into that in another, another discussion, but for this little video, we're just going to talk about the different capacity factors and how they look and how the capacity factors look. So base load are plants that pretty much run flat out at 100% power all the time. They might come down occasionally for some plant maintenance. All machinery needs to occasionally get maintained, a little oil put in, maybe the seals checked, just like you take your car in for maintenance and have air filters replaced and tires so your car isn't available during that time. So the, the maximum it can't run, so it's down to zero for, say, two time units here. We'll call this days. Um, but otherwise, it's running at 100%. You can see that the orange is pretty much all of the curve. There's a little bit that it could have run but didn't, and that's the blue. So this is the area where it could have run but didn't. Typical capacity factors are somewhere between 80 and 95% for units that are baseload. Baseload units are frequently um, coal. Hydro is usually baseload. Nuclear is usually baseload. Um, why are these picked over others? Cost. Usually they're a little less expensive. They're probably usually the cheapest money on the grid. There are some distortions in the market right now that's changing that answer a little bit, but that's still kind of where it sits. Okay. Another type of power plant, though, that we need is what's called a demand response unit. So it runs at different power levels in response to the demand. So when you turn on the light, if everybody turns on a light at the same time, you might need a little more power on the grid. That's got to come from somewhere. So um, these plants run at varying power levels. They can go all the way down to zero. Uh, depends on the facility and, and some other factors. 
but it'll run at different power levels at different times of day. It'll run at different power levels in different seasons of the year. So this graph I've created here is sort of a work week. So this is a weekend where during the day maybe they need 75 percent of the power because people are awake, their air conditioners are running, a few people are at work, businesses are in operation, so a little more electricity is needed on the grid. But weekend nights, boy, you don't need very much. Um, those are the most factories don't run on the weekends, or relatively few factories run on the weekends. So there's a relatively minimal draw on the the grid, so you don't need very much power weekend nights. But then during the week, you may need not too much during the weekday nights, but you need quite a bit of power during the day. So the unit might run all the way to 100%. Monday through Friday, daytime, and then run down to 75% or maybe even lower at night because, again, at night fewer factories are running, a lot of businesses aren't open at night, so there's generally less pull on the grid, people are asleep, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and then back to the weekend pattern. Some, some plants actually operate in this very regular kind of pattern. Some are a little bit more un more random looking because they're dealing with the very extreme peaks and they may only run for a very few hours uh, in the year. And uh, on another video I'll show you the uh, what's called a demand response curve that, that utilities sometimes use to explain how the energy consumption kind of looks. Capacity factors for these units can vary from very few percent um, I used 30 here as being more typical, up to maybe 75%. If it gets much above that, you start to think of that plant as being more baseload because it's operating a large fraction of the time at probably near 100% power. The final reason that you have a lower capacity factor is when it's an intermittent power source. And this is when it only can generate power or 100% power when the conditions are correct or perfect. So this curve I've shown you here on the left, this curve here, uh, let me get my little pointer back. Um, this curve here, eh, okay, is demonstrating maybe what a, a wind response might look like, like for a single capacity, single group of windmills. Um, I'm not going to get into the discussions about well, if you have windmills all across the continent, this is going to be smoothed out. I'm talking about a single facility in a single location. Excuse me. <coughs> Thank you. So um, when we look at those capacity factors, um, and, and again, this is just a drawing. I haven't gone out and gotten actual data from, from any given facility. But it might run at 100% for a few days, then it might get down and run lower, and then it might get all the way down to zero and operate at zero for a while. It might get back to 100%. It might go back down to zero. It might operate in lower levels. Capacity factors in most intermittent generation is typically between 15 and 40%. It depends very much on the optimum conditions. Um, for example, there are parts of the country and, and offshore where wind blows pretty consistently at pretty consistent speeds, so the capacity factors are somewhat higher. Solar panels, uh, the issue is obviously they don't generate much power at night, so the capacity factors are lower uh, because they operate at pretty close to 100 during the day and pretty close to zero at night. So um, they can be a fairly regular rhythm and look a bit more like this curve, um, or they can be very unpredictable and somewhat random in their generation and bounce around like this curve does. So I hope that helps you with understanding capacity factor. How much energy is really being generated matters. It really matters. When we talk about facilities and we say, well, that's a 100 megawatt uh, wind facility and this is a 100 megawatt hydro facility, the amount of energy you're going to achieve out of those two is very, very different. You can't look at a 100 megawatt wind facility and say, well, I can power a small city with that, just like I can power it with this hydro facility or this coal facility or this nuclear facility. It's not actually true because the, the wind facility is going to be intermittent and have a lower available capacity factor. So you need to understand how much energy is really going to be generated by the facility. So if you're comparing two potential sources of ener energy, ask the question, what is the capacity factor of a similar installation? That will help you understand the real energy output and how much it's really going to power your home and your business in your area. I hope this has helped you understand capacity factor a little better. Thank you for your time. If you've got questions or you'd like to see a video on another topic, you can reach me at fourfactorconsulting.com. 
Um, my email address is margaret at fourfactorconsulting.com. Feel free to contact me and I'm happy to take on additional topics. Thank you for your time.